I was while they yet lived. So this year, my first honoree is Jan Shavis Calloway. And Cheryl and Dawn Darby are going to come first and tell us all about John, Jan. And then Richard Calloway will come. And Brenda Berry will give her a couple hours. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Most of you know. By the way, I just apologize. Most of you know I spent 35 years in public education, first in the school district. Okay, is that better? I spent 35 years in public education, Christian City School District, and my English teachers taught me a term. It was called poetic license. That means I'm very tough to feel. <laughs> but first of all, let me say, I have known Jan since I was at Xavier University. Uh, one of my classmates was assigned to the school, the elementary school where she taught physical education. And we had a standing deal with him that whenever she showed up for gym class with those white pants on, he used to call us. And we just go over there and sit on the bleachers and watch her. <laughs> Jan uh, came up in Lincoln Heights. But she was, I think, the, we all know the word to Diddy. <laughs> See, she lived in the Valley Homes where they had grass and sidewalks. <laughs> She was an upper class. But also, one of the highlights of my life was having her children as students. She, she did a really good job with them. Uh, a really, really good job. I also spent a lot of time with Jan and her sister Elsie right back there in the kitchen. They taught me a lot of things, a lot of things. And by the way, if you have never had Jan's dressing, you, you are missing a lot. I tried to replicate it, but it didn't work that well. <laughs> I also uh, want to include Richard in a few things I have to say. And I'm, I'm, I'm told that one morning, Sunday morning, Richard and Jan, it was a little chilly outside, and they really didn't want to get up to fix that coffee before they got ready for church. And they argued back and forth. And so finally Jan said, it's in the Bible. You have to fix the coffee. And Richard said, what, where did that come from? She read the Bible and said, see, look, right here, Hebrew. Uh, they did go to church that day. They went to another church, not here. And uh, the preacher, in the middle of his sermon, Richard had dozed off. So the preacher said, He's taking poetic life. The, the preacher said, wake him up. And Jan said, you put him to sleep, you wake him up. <laughs> And we move on, and I think I have one more thing here. <laughs> and I'm going to get to something serious now. <laughs> Sister Shaw, our minds were in the same place. But I'm not going to, to reread Sister Maya Angelou's poem. But I do want to bring some highlights as they relate to Jan Shavers Calloway. The nominal woman taught us to love ourselves. <coughs> Laws and all. Maya Angelou taught us that people always remember the impressions that you make on them. 
I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. Amen. Jan, thank you for being you. So everyone, you know that God is the speaker in the family, not me. And he's the one that tells the lies, I tell the truth. I have worked, I have known Jan since the 1970s. I met her, if any of you are still from, from Cincinnati, you remember the Jack Dragon Inn in Swinton Center? That's where I met Jan. A friend of mine was also a friend of hers and introduced us while we were there. Never saw her many times after that, but until I came to Quinn Chapel. And so we renew our friendship, and our friendship has grown over the years. I've worked with her on the Usher Board, the Willing Workers, her and her sister Elsie. She helped Don and I, um, I'm sorry, not Don and I, no, uh, the, me, uh, Theta Dyson, and Karen Grissom work on the 2010 and the 2018 uh, annual conference. And I say thank you to Jane. Uh, thank you for checking in on my dad every April the 12th. My dad and Jan had the same birthday. So every April 12th, she would check in with my dad. And my dad loved her. He liked chicken wings. It's, that's right, and they like chicken wings. <laughs> and to Jan, I say thank you for your son. Jan's son, Jimmy Shavers, is one of the finest young men I have ever seen, ever. And trust me when I tell you, I, when I found out he worked downtown, did not know he was Jan's son, but knew that he was a former student with my, with my daughter. I, he worked at Saks Fifth Avenue, and every day, or at least twice a week during my lunch hour, I'd walk from before Kennedy to Fountain Square, all the way down to Saks Fifth Avenue, so I could see Jimmy Shavers. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, when Jimmy Shavers comes into town, she calls. I go see him when he comes to see me, and I get the infamous Jimmy Shavers back rub. <laughs> and, and if you've never had a Jimmy Shavers back rub, trust me when I tell you, if you didn't teach him anything else, James, you taught him well. Thank you. Diva, I love you. I care about you. Thank you for being my friend.
dress and what and she's my fashionista. <laughs> my fashionista, truly the love of, uh, of, of my life. Jan was uh, born here in Cincinnati, 4-12-1939. Parents, Wiley and Bessie Johnson. She was raised in Lincoln Heights. She attended uh, Blessed uh, Martin Elementary. Uh, she attended Our Lady of Angels and obviously had a pretty bright head. Well, you know, you don't go to Our Lady of Angels and not observe, observe things. She had amassed uh, credits which allowed her to consider uh, early graduation. Uh, her parents lived, uh, went, uh, worked downtown, so somehow or another she uh, found out that if she were to transfer to TAF, she could graduate a year early. She did so, and it was quite convenient in that her parents drove you know, down, downtown uh, daily. After uh, graduation from TAF, she went on to Miami University, uh, majored in education. She, after graduating, well, her first assignment was uh, a student uh, teacher at, at TAF. I didn't, I was at TAF, but she was a, she was a few years uh, ahead of me, but I didn't, I didn't know her, but some of the guys, you know, knew, <laughs> knew her, but it was much later when I found out that she, that she had been at, uh, at, at, at TAF. A lot of times, uh, a lot of the, her former, Jan talked about 32, 32 years, uh, she was at Porter, she was at Withrow. As a matter of fact, uh, both my son and daughter were at Withrow when she was there. Uh, my son played basketball at, at Withrow, so when I would come down from, from Michigan and, and attend the games, uh, I observed this young lady, um, and this was before I had even met her. And she had this uh, stance where she stood in the back. Yeah. So, and call my eye. Yeah. So, but she taught at uh, Edward Road and at TAF and then at the 2020 Detention Center for roughly, uh, roughly, 10, roughly 10 years. Jan was first married to uh, James Shade. I knew James, met James, and in that marriage, uh, they uh, had two had twins, James and Connie. Connie, unfortunately, is no longer with us. She died April uh, of uh, 21. A darling, darling person. She was, after we had, uh, got us very well acquainted and married, she was the first one to call me Poppy. Poppy. <laughs> Sweet child. Jan has uh, seven grandchildren, one of whom is uh, here today, Jasmine. Sweet, loving child. Jan has been involved in mentoring for Quite some time, she's mentored, mentored at uh, Hoffman, at Evanston, Harpwell, and as was mentioned earlier, she's still mentoring, and, and she's mentoring now with uh, John B. Uh, Parker. Now, she's also a member of. Uh, Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated. 
Uh, Delta every year uh, sponsors uh, a uh, Botillion Military, which is a scholarship program for uh, young men. And all of these, we've had a, and the one that, that's uh, selected to be uh, Mr. Mr. Bo, we've had, we've had a number of them here from uh, Keith Mitchell comes to, uh, come to, comes, comes to mind, and uh, McCole Berry's grandson Nadir uh, was also Mr. Bo. This program is just phenomenal. All of these young men go on to college, graduate, and do quite well for, for themselves. My wife uh, has been uh, the instructor of their uh, uh, waltz program, uh, and that's something to uh, something to see. Very. Uh, very classy and, 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 and well done. Uh, I can't, you know, I, I can't say enough good things uh, about the, about Jan. She's dependable, uh, she's good to look at. And, <laughs> she is, uh, she's uh, she's also very athletic. <laughs> Jan participated in tennis, softball, volleyball, as a player and coach. And she played here uh, on Quinn Chapel's uh, softball team uh, some, years, uh, some years back. Um, and uh, she's the, the, uh, uh, an avid bowler. Uh, however, she doesn't, she, the group that she bowls with, they, they, they bowl no longer. Everybody's gotten uh, old, crippled, blind, and crazy. <laughs> so, but, uh, but but they did well. They did well when they uh, uh, when when they when they had well, they would they had a travel team and go all various places throughout the throughout the country doing so uh, and uh, win prizes, win money. But. The one thing that we, she and I, we, we again, we, we love, we, we love dancing, we both, we had so many things in, in common. At one time when I was uh, uh, working, I would have to uh, travel, uh, and, uh, but she always, unlike some, some women uh, who would say to their boyfriend or husband, that's all you think about the sports. And have an attitude. Well, we didn't have that problem because she was very much into the sport as I well uh, as I was, and in some cases uh, knew more about the sport than than, than, than I did. Um, but she would record the game, you know, for me, and that was a, quite an influence, you know, to me. That was uh, that was a, another check mark. But as we uh, you know, uh, grew in our relationship now, and we got, uh, got married in uh, September of, uh, of 93. Um, it's been a very enriching uh, experience. And she's one that I can truly depend on. You know, I, I, I have a lot of uh, friends that have uh, left us who didn't have a significant other. And one of the reasons, and I, was, I think I was talking to Don, Don Darby about this, one of the things that uh, I think has left to the demise of some of our men is that there is no significant other. And we need you all. Because you care for us, you 
take care of us. He reminds us when, when it's time to take the medicine, time to go to the doctor and what have you. We, 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 we need that. And so often, some of these various friends who have left us was found sleeping in bed, found asleep on the sofa watching the TV, sleeping up in the car. But we need you all, and I very much need her. So thank you all for the recognition. And uh, we're probably going to be around here for another 40 years. <laughs> thank you. giving glory to God and to all the people who are of God. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for, I think everybody in here is my friend. <laughs> if you're not my friend, I think you are. <laughs> I enjoy all the words, although some of them, like John Don said, were po poetic license. <laughs> and of course, you know, I love this man here. If you see him, you see me. Uh -huh. And most people will tell you that. If you see Jan, you know Richard is someplace close by. And if there's something that where we're dancing, we're going to be there. Mm -hmm. I have loved Gwen Chapel. I started volunteering here when my sister and mother were here, and I was still going to the Catholic Church. But in 1984, all of a sudden the church was here in this hall. I decided this is where I want to be. And I have been here ever since. I have, I've done everything. I've worked at vacation Bible school, I've worked as an usher, I've worked as a cook. Whatever we needed at Quinn, I have tried to do it. And I'm so thankful for all of you all. You just don't know. But anyway, thank you for recognizing me. I hope, I don't know about the 40 more years, <laughs> but 85 is looking good to me. Here, and I don't know if you'd like to give a few remarks regarding our honorary here. Oh, no. <laughs> Let the church say amen. 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 You know, um, there is only one Jan Shavers Calvary. You can't duplicate her anywhere in the world. And um, I knew her before I became the pastor of this church through Reverend Donald Jordan. And uh, we were at events together when I was here in the early 2000s. But one of the things that is very apparent is that you never see her in the same outfit twice. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't care when you see it, you never see her in the same outfit twice. Don't believe it. And so, um, but she, is, uh, she has certainly enveloped Lucinda and myself since we have been here at Quinn. And I love her and I love Brother Richard from the very bottom of my heart. You cannot find much finer people than the two of them. So to both of you, I say congratulations because as we celebrate you, we celebrate Brother Richard. We love you and may God continue to bless you. God bless. Thank you. 
James 5.16 reads, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Where the fervent prayer is a passionate and sincere calling of God. This is who I've known my mother to be. She has been witnessed as a prayer warrior by many people. And yet, as shouting many, <laughs> to many others, Yep. She picked up the phone during various hours of the day or night, meeting people's requests for prayer. She has been stopped in the grocery store to have prayer with individuals whom she has never met, yet graciously obliged. She has also held prayer meetings by phone at 5 a.m. daily for many, many one of my sisters describes her prayers as from her mouth to God's ear, because many blessings have been seen and shared as a testimony following Reverend Minnie's prayers in prayer closet. I've watched my mother pray over my siblings during time of cancer, stroke, and pulmonary embolism without their knowledge that she was on her knees constantly praying and fasting without ceasing. She has also been the celestial choir's chaplain for many years, praying over each member every day. We lost my father during the Christmas of 1988 and my oldest brother during the spring of 1993. As our mother prayed, she held tightly to God's unchanging hand, and in our weakness, we were made strong under God's grace. As we honor you, we much appreciate and love you as a person and as a prayer warrior. know when I can see better out of my eyes the glasses. <laughs> First give glory, honor, and abundant praise to God. I stand before you sincere, grateful, and I want to express a heartfelt thank you to my family, Pastor Covington, First Lady Lucinda, Covington friends, friends, Miss Lowell Smith, and the second adult ministry members for this recognition luncheon. No one can make it through life without support. My journey through life was accomplished by my God's grace my family, and my friends. I've been a member of Quinn for many years and have developed many friendships at church family. And you hold a special place in my heart. As a prayer warrior, I had learned to pray as a little girl. And I've been on, been and AME all my life. My father was a Baptist. My mother was an AME. And I married a Catholic man, Lord have mercy. <laughs> it's true. Have all them Catholic children taught three advice. But God first and read your Bible every day. Treat each 
other with respect. Yet plenty of rest. Lastly, to each person here, your presence today is an example of the love and support I feel from you. Thank you all for being a part of this wonderful recognition lunch. Thank God. I made my first recording when I was five years old in Selma, Alabama. I would love to tell you what the reading on it said, but don't look at me like that. <laughs> it's true. At five years old, and they kept it and they played it. Oh, wow. Sister Minnie. I, I need to share with you all how I met Sister Minnie. Probably everybody in here has known her much longer than I have. But in 2016, Sister Minnie brought the prayer for Women's Day. And as she still does today, when she walked to the pulpit, she said, it's prayer time. <laughs> now, a few months after that, my husband was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and decided that he wanted to do his treatment in Philadelphia. So we rode up and down the road for five months for his treatment. But one day, very early on, he said to me, don't you have that tape of prayer time? And I said, well, I think so. Got it out. So we listened to Reverend Minnie, and prayer time up and down the highway. I had not met her, only saw her at Women's Day. So toward the end, I asked him why he always wanted prayer time, because we had a whole lot of other tapes, and he said to me, because when I'm in pain, that's when I need prayer time. He said, and I listened to her, and I feel that. And he said, you know, she is really my prayer warrior. So when I came back from Philadelphia after his funeral, I made it a point to introduce myself to his prayer time and his warrior. And now she has become fast friends and our family um, warrior, prayer warrior. So thank you. I love you. Thank you. Now, we talk on the phone every day, so. <laughs> yeah, she, she called, now we talk at eight o'clock. Now, one day she called and it was seven minutes after eight and she wanted to know why I hadn't called. <laughs> Thank you, we love you. Here, a couple gifts for you. And we're giving you your flowers while you're here. I was telling him, I said, if all of my children, grandchildren, great grandchildren was here, they would have this room running over. <laughs> Just had a new great great grandson born down in Florida. They keep adding them to me. Thank you. <laughs> Let's give them. Let's give Reverend Minnie a hand. We know that the worship experience at Quinn Chapel is always elevated when Reverend Minnie prays. But I would submit to you that African Methodism, that Forest Park, that this world is elevated when Reverend Minnie prays. And so to Reverend Minnie, my prayer for you is that you continue to pray. Somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind took the time and prayed for me and so I believe because they prayed because of Reverend many prayed I'm able to stand where I stand today so God bless you, God keep you and may God continue to use you as you continue to lift him through your prayers now she's telling her age y'all, she don't let me tell her age she says she's 88, is that what you said? <laughs>
88. Come on, y'all, let's celebrate 88. Minutes. presentation on understanding Alzheimer's and dementia. And then in April, the Hawksworth Blood Mobile will be here. And if <coughs> they have a, uh, next month we'll tell more about it, but they're asking people to sign up because they need at least 35 people. Thank you all for coming and Pastor Sullivan. Let us stand. Let us keep the family of Brother Charlie Milton, one of our members who transitioned, transitioned, ooh, I can't get the word out, transitioned yesterday about 8 o'clock in the morning. And so let us keep that family in our prayers. Let us pray. God, we thank you for all that you have done and all that you continue to do. God, we thank you for every household and every individual under the sound of my voice. God, we pray for your strength, for your power, and for your peace as we leave this blessed place. God, continue to lift us up and strengthen us that we might have strength to run this race. God, we come against anything that's not like you and declare in you all things are made well and made possible. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for the leadership of this ministry. Thank you for our honorees and their families. God, we just thank you for one more day and for being God and God all by yourself. Bless us with a choice dismissal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.